Okay, hey everyone, and welcome back to Mission Impact Series with Tracy B. Allen and Ty Boone. And today we're going to be talking about this is part three of, uh, you know, I never know what I'm talking about from Impact <laughs> Inspiration. <laughs> From Impact Inspiration, and today we're going to be talking about some impact, some inspiration, inspiring impact stories. So we'll highlight a few impact, um, inspiration, impact stories of people who have made real change or differences within their communities. This will include sharing stories of individuals who have overcome diversity and made significant impact in their communities, as well as discussing the impact successful the impact of successful nonprofits and social enterprise initiatives. So again, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of Impact Management Group, where I help social impact businesses to design, build, and fund their, so, their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles that they desire while impacting their communities, positively right. impacting their communities. community. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Ty Boone. I'm from Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. Tracy, when you say, um, you know, from impact to inspiration, you know, and, and, and these organizations that really have success, every time I think about that, I think about um, an aid service organization where I used to work. Mm -hmm. um, there was a young woman. Well, she was young at the time. I know, I know she doesn't mind me sharing the story because she shares it everywhere. She's what we call a witness role model, right? She's like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell my thing. So uh -huh. she came to us um, and she, this was back in, you know, probably what, 11 years ago, long time ago. She mm -hmm. came to us and she, she, she was HIV positive, but she was living with HIV. She'd had a baby and the baby um, ended up also being HIV positive, right? And the baby died and she came to us. She was, um, she didn't have a place to stay. She didn't have a job and she didn't have a high school diploma, right? Mm -hmm. um, the services that we provided were um, housing and we also did prevention education type of things. So um, when she came in, we were able to get her and we had a, a one of the, we had three programs. So it was a housing that also had like a substance abuse um, mm -hmm. component to it. You had, you know, HIV education and then you had, you know, normal residential housing. So we were able to get her into the substance abuse program because that's that's kind of how she trans, trans, um, trans, whatever, she was, became HIV positive through that. Um, mm -hmm. We got her in the housing and then she ended up coming over to the education side of things that we had to educate her about, you know, keeping your viral loads low and and prevention and those right. kind of things. Eventually, she kind of, she kind of cleaned up and we made her a, a peer educator. So she were you know was strong enough to share her story with other people who came in and all this kind of stuff. We helped her to get into a GED program and she got a GED. You know, mm -hmm. long story short. Now she has a master's degree in social work. This is a long time. Oh, wow. right? um, through, her, through her work, so she was she ended up staying in our housing and all this kind of stuff. But after she got her GED, then she went on to get her bachelor's degree. She ended up getting her own place. So getting out of that, you know, the housing that we provide. That's transformation right there. <laughs> transformation <laughs> number one was getting her GED. Right? Transformation number two, getting that bachelor's degree. Transformation number yep. three, getting out of the housing that you guys provided her with. So yeah, yep. that's a lot of transforming. Transformation. The methods in social work, if you were to go to that website of that organization right now, even though that's been 11, 12 years ago, she is on that website telling what her story. What is the story. name of, you know, what the name of it's it? It's Alabama is the name of the organization. If you go to that website, azalabama.org, um, you'll be able to see her. Her name is Janet Johnson. And I know she doesn't mind because she always tells her story. Um, but that's the transformation that that she was able to experience and not just GD doing this work, whatever, but coming back and giving back to the same community, um, being able to share. And now she's a social worker. So it's like, you know, that's what I see when I see transformation. And I it took a while, right? We're, we're at year 11, you know, and, and I can't remember how many years ago she, she got her master's in social work, but her being able to just go back and give that kind of education and move beyond some of the, some of the barriers and issues that she had with the help of that organization. Awesome. Awesome. So mine's the GED. 
Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. I was a GED based pro, um, transformation too. Um, so I used to teach some GED classes different times, right? But the transformation that happens when you have GED students is just amazing. Um, so one of the programs I was doing um, had some, it was a bunch of immigrant um, people, uh, participants. So a lot of them were from like the islands, Jamaica, so on and so forth. And uh, this one young lady that was in the program, she was living with her family and it wasn't the best situation Like they would get on her all the time was kind of semi abusive. And she was just like, I got to get my GD because I need to find a better job. She was working in a grocery store at the time and, you know, making minimum wage. It just wasn't working for her. And she was very smart. She just didn't have the opportunity to go to school before she came. Um, you know, all the way through in Jamaica. She went to school, but she didn't get to go all the way through. And then she came to the States and then, you know, she was a, a little too old for high school at that point in time. So getting her GED was um, imperative to her sex. She wanted to be a nurse, um, but to get into most of the programs, you have to have a high school diploma. So she came, went through the program. Um, I would help to tutor her on the side with things that she wasn't familiar with. And after being in the program for a year, she was able to go on and um, take her GED. And this is when they changed the GED because they brought in the um, the new system, in which a lot of people just could not get behind because it was way harder. And she passed her GED. She was able to get into the community college and start the associate degree RN program. And I kind of lost touch with them because I stopped working with the program. And I was in the supermarket one day and I heard somebody said, Miss Allen, Miss Allen. I was like, who the heck is calling me Miss Allen? You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I don't teach school, <laughs> but who's calling me Miss Allen? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I completely forgot about it because, you know, in the program, they would call me Miss Allen too. So I'm looking around, looking around, and I saw her. She was like, it's what I can't remember her name right now, but she was like, it's blah, blah, blah. And I was like, huh? And she was like, it's what, don't you remember me? I was in your GD program. So when she came close, I was like, oh, hey, how are you doing? So she was so happy to tell me how she had, you know, um, she was in the RN program. She was getting ready to um, to graduate. She was working as a medical assistant. She was able to move out of the housing situation that she was in with her family. Yep. She had her apartment and she was just doing very, very well. And it's just, it's just, it warms your heart when you can see that transformative effect take place, mm -hmm. right? And again, that's moving from one situation into a completely different situation, getting one step closer to their ultimate goal as well. It's not just about you. Your goal is to get them through the GED program, if we're talking GED, right? So my goal was to get them through the GED program, to pass the GED program. That was all I was there, for, there to do, right? It was to just get them through this program and get them to pass it. But they had other goals. And of course, as I taught the program, I would you know, try to inspire them as much as possible to make sure that once they got that piece of paper, that they utilize it to move to the next level and to the next level until they got their, their um, desired goal. And she was not the only person in that program who had met in grocery stores. It just so happened I met them in the grocery stores um, that had you know, seen me. They recognized me before I recognized them. And that's usually how it is anyway. And, you know, what so happy to tell me about them getting into community college or trade school or, you know, getting a better job, moving into a different position or something to that effect. So just knowing that th that transformation is happening, because once they're able to get better jobs, better paying jobs um, or anything like that, then they're able to change their lifestyles. Of course, now all of it isn't all a bed of roses. I also had people within the class who would tell, make every excuse, right? Whether they were from a foreign country or they were even from America, who would always make excuses as to why they couldn't do X, Y, Z. Oh, you don't understand this. Miss, you don't understand. I got kids at home too. I was like, I got kids too. Okay, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I still gotta get up and come to this job every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So why they couldn't study, why they couldn't so there, you can't help everybody, but you need to just hone in and focus on the people that you can help and just kind of try to inspire the people that you can't help in the media because eventually, hopefully, they'll turn around and you'll be able to transform their lives as well. Mm -hmm. 
And that's impact. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I said that all right. So, <laughs> yes. So remember to use your mission to positively impact your community. All right. Next time we'll be talking about impact investment for social enterprises. So until then, bye everyone.